Okay, 8.3, proving triangles similar by SSS similarity and SAS similarity. So in 8.2, we had AA similarity theorem, um, and now we've got these two new ones. Um, okay, so when we had side, side, side congruency theorems, that meant that if three sides of a triangle are congruent to to three sides in another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. But this is different. My sides are not going to be congruent in these two triangles, okay? But this says um, AB is to DE. So AB is this side, and there's DE. So AB is to DE as BC is to EF. Well, BC and EF are the right sides of those triangles, and then those are the, in proportion to AC and DF. Okay, so it's not that they're congruent. You can see the second triangle is bigger, but those sides are going to be in proportion, right? So, so this is really saying that the sides are in proportion for all three pairs. Okay. So when that happens, then the two triangles are going to be similar. So triangle ABC would be similar to triangle DEF. Okay, and that's the side, side, side um, triangle uh, similarity theorem. Okay, so let's uh, try it out. So um, on this example, first it says, is triangle ABC congruent to triangle, sorry, similar to triangle DEF? Well, what I want to do is see if the sides are in proportion, okay? So AB, I can see that's the first two letters that should match up with DE. Also, I can see AB is the smallest of these, and DE is the smallest. So it's another way that I know that those two should match up, okay? So um, let's try it out. So I'm going to um, check out first AB to DE. So let's see, um, AB would be 8. DE would be 6, okay, all right, and then let's look at the next set. So um, 12, I'll put a box around these. That's my middle size number here, my medium one, right? And then my medium one here is EF, and I can verify BC, second and third letters, EF, uh, also the second and third letters. So I should be matching those up in the same way, 12 and 9. Okay, and then 16 and 12 are the remaining ones. So what I want to do is see if these three fractions are, um, are equivalent. So a number of ways you can do that, easiest way, I think, is just to reduce all three of them. And if they're equal, then, then they're equivalent. You could put them into a calculator as well. By the way, you could have all three of these fractions flipped upside down, because I could have said 6 is to 8 as 9 is to 12 and so forth, but it doesn't really matter, okay? So let's reduce these. This reduced would be 4 thirds because I could divide by 2, right? I can divide these numbers both by 3, and then I'll get 4 thirds. I can divide these both by 4, and hey, I got 4 thirds. So those are all equal. So that means that those sides are in proportion, and my answer is going to be yes. And I used... SSS similarity theorem. Okay. All right. So let's try another one going with the same diagram. Is this first triangle um, similar to the third one? So let's try it out again. So smallest side here, and I'll circle my smallest side here. So AB and GH. Yeah, I can see those are the first and second letters in both of those. Okay, and then my middle sized one over here is the 10. So I'm going to match up 12 and 10. Those would be corresponding sides. And then 16 and um, 16. Okay, so reducing these, well, 8 divided by 8 equals 1, right? And so does 16 divided by 16. But if I reduce this one, I'm going to get 6 fifths or 1 and um, 1 and 1 fifth. And those are not all equal to each other, right? Just having, um, yeah, I've got two of the three that are equal, but they're not all in proportion. So that means I can't use SSS. So my answer, sadly, is no, they're not similar triangles.
Okay. All right. So next up, we've got the SAS similarity theorem. Okay. So um, we had an SS, SAS congruency theorem as well. And remember that the placement of the A is important, okay? Because um, that means that this is going to be the included angle. In other words, it's the angle formed by those two sides, right? It would be different if I had the A in a different position, and in fact it wouldn't work. But I need to have the A in between those two S's, okay? So looking at this picture, if we've got, hey, we've got those two angles congruent, but then they also tell me um, that these particular sides are in proportion. So let's look at that, AB and, and DE. So AB is to DE, so that's those two, right? As AC is to DF. AC is to DF, AC is to DF. Now you can see that those are the included angles, right? They're formed by those lines that I just color co coded there. So when that happens, you guessed it, the triangles are going to end up being similar. So triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. Okay, and with that in mind, on the next page, let's try um, another problem. Are these similar triangles? Okay, now remember that's supposed to mean that those two Angles are congruent there. That's the book's way of saying that. I like to put in the little ticks. Okay, so I've got congruent angles. So then I'm thinking, well, I do have the sides that are marked with numbers are the two sides that would create those angles, but I still need to check if those sides are in proportion. So I need to see, check if 21 is to 7 as 24.6 is to 8.2. Okay. Now, I know 21 is three times as big as 7, but in my head, I'm not sure if 24.6 is three times as big as 8.2. So let's try it out. Okay, And, you know, it doesn't really matter. You can go from small to big or big to small. So 21 to 7 would be fine. I'm going to call this 7 to 21. So I'm going to see if 7 is to 21 as 8.2 is to 24.6. Okay. Now, I said they're equal here. But I'm not really sure, so if they turn out not being equal, I'll just cross that out, right? Um, a number of ways you can try this. You could reduce again. I know that reduces to one-third. This is a little harder to reduce. You could actually reduce it without too much trouble. You could multiply the top and bottom by 10, so you'd get 82 over 246, and then reduce that and see if it comes out to one-third or not. Another way you can test this is just to type them both into a calculator and see if you get uh, equivalent um, decimals. Or we can test if the cross products are, are equal. If the cross products are equal, then those two um, fractions are equivalent. Okay? So I can check if 21 times 8.2 is equal to 7 times 24.6. Okay? Any of those methods is fine. Um, let's see. 21 times 8.2 comes out to 172.2. 7 times 24.6. Hey, it worked. They both come out to 172.2. So I know that those are in proportion. So my answer here is yes, these are similar. And I used the SAS triangle similarity theorem. There we go. Okay. All right, last one. Well, not the last one. There's two more. Okay, so um, second to last one. This says find the x and y values that make the triangles similar. Okay, so if these triangles are similar, then I know the sides are going to be in proportion. I'm actually not going to deal with the angles here. I'm not interested in the angles because all of the expressions are for the sides. So I'm thinking, okay, all the sides would be in proportion, and I can see um, AB would match up with DE, and just visually you can probably see those are going to be matching pieces, right? Um, so let's, uh, I'll, I'll solve for X first. 3 should be to 15, as 5 is to 5 times the quantity X minus 6, right? So let's try that out. 3 is to 15, 
as 5 is to 5 times x minus 6. Okay. Now, you could cross multiply it right now. Nothing wrong with that. Um, I'm just noticing, hey, I could do some reducing and make my life a little bit easier. Okay, because I know 3 fifteenths will reduce to 1 fifth. Okay, and then also I can reduce that, right? When you cancel these out, some people just leave this right side as x minus 6, but you still need a 1 in the numerator to show that x minus 6 should be in the denominator, right? Because 5 over 5 really reduces to 1 over 1, which would leave this still on the bottom, okay? So then I've got this down to 1 over 5 equals 1 over x minus 6, and then I'm going to cross multiply from there. So it's just going to give me 5 equals x minus 6 because I need the bottoms to be the same thing for that to work, right? So 5 equals x minus 6, and that means x is going to be 11. Okay, so let's uh, try the same thing again. So um, I know y minus 5 should be in proportion to 30. So I can say 3 is to 15 as y minus 5 is to 30. Okay, and again, I'm going to reduce the 3 fifteenths, but you don't have to. I just like to. I just feel like there's less chance I'll make a little mistake when I'm dealing with smaller numbers. I especially like dealing with ones because it makes life easy. 30 equals, and remember this is going to be 5 times the quantity y minus 5. Sometimes I see people just write that without the parentheses, and that doesn't mean the same thing because I'm still going to need to multiply the 5 into both of those um, terms in the y minus 5 expression up there. Okay, So 30 is going to equal 5y minus 25. I'll add 25. So 55 equals 5y, and then just divide by 5, and y should equal 11. And those are my, so both x and y came out to 11. So they'd have to both be 11 for that to work. Okay. All right. And now, um, okay, so let's do a little recap of the triangle similarity postulates we've got um, at our disposal. So we had AA from the last section. Now we've added these two. Just wanted to make a list as we go. There we go. Okay. All right. So this next um, problem, this is one of my favorites. I um, can't remember if it's from this book or from a different book I've taught out of, but it's uh, showing you a real-world application, and there's a story that goes with it. So you're on a hike. There's, there's you, right? That's you. You're on a hike, and then a um, geyser springs out of the ground. And naturally, your first question is, well, how tall is the geyser? But you got a little problem. Even if you had a ladder, you couldn't very well set up a ladder and go measure the geyser because you'd get wet, right? So then you're just about to give up and think, well, I guess I'll never know how tall the geyser is. But then you spot on the ground in between you and the geyser, there's a mirror. And then when you look into the mirror, you can see the top of the geyser in, reflected in the mirror. Okay. Um, um, the ground you're hiking on is perfectly flat. You always hike on flat ground because uh, you're just not into the uphill downhill thing. Okay, so um, this is going to work out. Okay, and l and let's say we have a, a tape measure too. So you know how tall you are. You don't have to measure yourself, and you, you're six feet tall, just so you know. Okay, but we can also measure these ground distances. So you could measure that it's seven feet from where you're standing to the mirror, and it's fifty feet from the mirror to the uh, to the geyser. Okay, so we can actually get the height of this geyser because we've got these two beautiful triangles. And they're going to be um, they're going to be um, similar triangles. Now you have to be standing straight up, and the ground has to be flat because we need a right angle right there. Okay, and then also we need a right angle there. Okay, so that's one pair of congruent angles. 
there's another pair of congruent angles um, where this line of reflection happens. So think about hitting a pool ball off of the side of it, banking it off the side of a table. Um, if you've ever done that, you know that, hey, those two angles are going to be congruent. And it's the same thing with any sort of reflection like that. Okay, so now we've got similar triangles by AA, okay? So then we can set up a proportion. So I can say um, 6 is to 7 as x is to 50. Or you could say 6 is to x as 7 is to 50. So there's lots of different ways. Why don't I, do, I think that's the way I've been doing it before. So I'll say 6 is to x as 7 is to 50. Seven x equals six times fifty. So seven x is going to equal three hundred, and then we could divide by seven. Okay, and that's going to come out to I don't know why I did it right there, but that's going to come out to. Um, I'm going to round this because you probably wouldn't say 300 sevenths feet. Um, so I'll round this to the, to the nearest hundredth. And that's about 42.86 feet. And so now next time you're on a hike on perfectly flat ground and you want to know the, the height of a, a geyser and there happens to be a mirror on the ground in between you and the geyser and you have a tape measure, you're set. Okay, and that's the end of the section. See you next time.